Hello everyone, good evening. So what a privilege to be invited here as uh, God's messenger for tonight sa ating uh, sharing time. So thank you so much Kate for inviting me. So again, uh, good evening. Sorry I cannot join you live but I prepared this uh, video. I recorded this a night before. Uh, the Thursday. So anyway, uh, our topic for this evening, I think it's very, very important kasi most of us nakaka-relate dito. So ilan ba sa atin dito ang nasaktan na and then it's very difficult na magpatawad, right? So sometimes uh, we think that we are entitled sa mga feelings na feel natin and we also say to ourselves na Uh, si, uh, hindi natin deserve ang magpatawad sa tao na kasakit sa atin because maybe that could be very, very painful that it doesn't deserve forgiveness. So tonight, tinan po natin kung ano po yung sinasabi ng Biblia sa ating mga ginagawa sa buhay, especially in our decision to forgive or not to forgive. So allow me to share my screen Uh, with you. So, let me know if kung nakikita niyo po yung screen ko. So, ito po siya. Our title for this evening is entitled, sorry, our topic for this evening is entitled, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt. Wow! No? So, parang nakaka, ano siya, um, it's easy to say than to do, di ba? No? Parang easy lang na sabihin, pero napaka-difficult siyang gawin. Kasi sabi dito, love like you've never been hurt. So, you keep on loving as if hindi ka nasaktan. No? Sakit ka, ayun no? ako ng murag, okay lang, okay lang ko. No? Dili ka ayaw sakit, pero grabe di ay. Siguro, gabi na nga, kasakit ang atong naagian. Then, it could be emotional, no? Siguro, um, namatayan tayo sa family, nawala ng family member, or also someone had hurt us intentionally, uh, may naglibak sa atua, may nagdry door sa atua, no? so things like that. Even physically, uh, we might have um, met a vehicular accident or you know, sakit na physical mo na feel And most of all, could be spiritually. So, yung napapalayo ka na sa Panginoon, hindi mo na siya feel because you yourself is running away from the Lord. So, things like that. But tonight, the encouragement to us is magmahal ka as if or like hindi ka nasaktan before. So, tingnan natin kung kaya natin to. How many quotes have you remembered or used so far? Napakarami, right? Right now, may mga memes pa nga. We, uh, every time we browse our Facebook, we can see a lot of quotes, a lot of verses no, na pwede nating dalhin-dalhin, pwede nating i-memorize. But did you know, meron dito isa sa mga famous, and even it's in the Bible, of course, na normally hindi natin nabibigyan ng importance. Pero let's find out this one. One of the truest quotes so far, okay, is in 1 Corinthians 13.8a, love never fails. So, totoo ba to na ang love, hindi siya nabibigo, hindi siya, you know, uh, dili ka ma-fail sa love, love never fails. Let's find out this. In the Bible, alam niyo po ba na there are a number of people who love like they've never been hurt. No, Nakaka-inspire to sila. Guys, no? Number one dito si Joseph. Alam naman po natin yung nangyari kay Joseph, right? Joseph was being sold to slavery. And ang pinakamasakit pa, the people who actually sold him, my gosh, kadugo niya, no? His brothers. So, for those who do not know the background of Joseph, you read about that. That is in Genesis, if I'm not mistaken. At nakikita po natin dito, on how God has used this misery, no? Nga, pinapakamiserable din ang kinabuhi ni Joseph kay even his own brothers kasi nainggit kay Joseph, gibaligya siya dito sa mga tag-Egyptian for uh, a number of penny. I don't, I don't know kung uh, ano kadamo ito nga money, no? I can't remember exactly, but in exchange of money, binenta nila yung kapatid ng si Joseph. But Joseph... After some time, no, na binigyan siya ng chance ng Panginoon, God has really given him opportunity, naging governor siya ng the whole Egypt, naging wise siya na governor. And lo and behold, si Joseph po tinitingala ng whole Egypt. Wow, amazing, right? 
And nung time na yung mga kapatid yun ay nangangailangan, these brothers actually went to Egypt to really ask for help kasi um, famine is really their rampant, tulang makain. And Joseph, knowing na siya yung governor, very wise, he's following God, God has been revealing to him things that he does not really reveal to other people but only to Joseph. So si Joseph naging wais siya kasi may godly counselor siya. That's God. Ang nangyari, meron siyang mga nakip na mga Uh, pagkain. So, hindi nagutom ang Egypt. That's why ito mga kapatid ni uh, Joseph pumunta doon sa Egypt, from Israel, pumunta sa Egypt para mag-ask ng tulong at bumili ng makakain. And Joseph actually, uh, he really knew na mga kapatid niya to And these brothers, hindi na na-recognize si Joseph. Pero nung ginawa ni Joseph, silaktan niya ba ang mga kapatid? No, hindi. Pinatawad right away. That moment, pinatawa niya yung mga brothers niya. So, hindi po siya gumante. Wala pong uh, hatred na nangyari. Joseph was there. Joseph truly understood how far has God brought him from being a slave now, a governor. And it couldn't happen without that, you know, selling, bartering thing. Hindi siya binenta. So, alam mo yun, Um, lumalapad yung perspective ni Joseph on knowing God is really a faithful God. God is really a good God. Kasi God siya ng mga plans. Napakalaki ng plano ng Panginoon sa buhay ni Joseph. And that he truly understood. Now we have Moses. Yung naman hindi makakilala kay Moses. You know exactly. You knew. For those who have already known. You knew exactly what happened to Moses. ba? Diba? Ito si Moses. One of the great leaders. no? our our ancestors before so uh, we know already the what happened to Moses itong si Moses siya naglead sa mga tao from the slavery of Egypt sinave niya na sinave ang nahati ang Red Sea and the here comes itong mga tao sinisisi si Joseph No ba yan, Joseph? Buti pa hindi pa may sumama sa iyo ganun yes, can you imagine the pressure of Joseph that time Nung ikaw ang leader, tapos nung niabot na mo dito sa kuan, sa itong giingunin mo nga at tuan ninyo, ikaw ang gisisi. Marami nyo ka na, gusto mo na siya, oh, ikaw ang nagagad-agad mo pa kami diri, di na ano na lang kami, may bawal mo kami ginhagad. <laughs> But Joseph actually understood, sorry, Moses understood, no, na part ng talaga ito sa mga proseso. And so see, after that, God has been providing them. God provided mana. God provided, um, God has shown to the whole tribe, no? Kung gano'n siya ka-powerful. And then, that's it. Uh, nakikita talaga na, na, na pa process I mean, God is really the God of order. I will not discuss, uh, um, ano no, uh, in detail lahat. Kasi may idea naman tayo dito. Let's go to David kay Job, and even kay Jesus. Ito sila yung mga tao na grabe yung hurt na na-feel, pero hindi po nila pinafeel ito sa mga tao na susuraw sa kanila. They did not even uh, try to have this long-lasting na effect ng hatred na pinafeel nila sa ibang tao yung na-feel na na-hurt, nung hindi lang ganun. Kasi sa totoo lang, if nabago na tayo ni Kristo, wala po tayong spirit of grudges, no? o grudging, yung gusto natin, gusto na mamalus, nang gusto natin na, oh, mantay ka lang gid, karma ka gid, na, balaba mo na. No, we don't believe that. We don't even um, try to think of that. Kasi nabago na ba tayo ng Panginoon? I hope and I really pray na isa po yung mindset natin ngayon. If someone has hurt us badly, I hope hindi po vengeance, hindi po pamalos ang ato niya next nga naas ang mind. I hope what's in our mind is really to pray for that person, not to really hurt him or her. Okay, let's go here. Paano? <laughs> Ate, grabe naman. No? Sakit kaya, masakit ka. Tapos, balan mo lang kami nga love like you've never been hurt. How? It's easier said than done. So, that's explained, no? Ano po sabi ng Panginoon dito? Things we need to understand. Number one po kasi, we are forgiven to forgive. Wow. Na forgive po tayo ng Panginoon sa ating mga kasalanan. The Christian walk is nothing but a journey of forgiveness. And that po natin yan. The whole Christian walk, Christian journey po natin, it's all about forgiveness. Kasi po everyday nasasaktan tayo, consciously or unconsciously, 
part talaga yan sa ating buhay na masasaktan tayo. But remember, if our heart is not a forgiving heart, mahihirapan po tayong sundin si Kristo. Amen? It's so difficult to obey God if you have a stubborn heart. No? Parang nagnaka sa klase and then the teacher is giving instruction and then the instruction cannot be carried or cannot be transpired. Hindi po na-appreciate ng mga student kasi maybe the students are stubborn and they also have their own instruction. No? Parang sila po yung magaling sa teacher. So wala. Walang the teacher and the student, the relationship, walang nagka-come up na magandang Uh, output sa buong klase. Same is true with our greatest teacher, Jesus Christ. no? Ang Panginoon ang ating greatest teacher. If God is telling us to forgive and we're not listening kasi meron tayong own principle na hindi good word, hindi good pwede, oh, hindi good pwede, patawad, yaka grabe, kinakasakit mo. Mas grabe pa po ba yan sa nagawa ni Kristo sa atin? no? Tayo grabe ang kasalanan but Jesus Christ has forgiven us. God has forgiven us through the gift of His Son, through Jesus Christ who died on the cross. Wala na pong mas grabe pa doon. That's the highest form of love ever written in history. I hope we all agree on that. Now, let's have number two. We are part of God's ministry of reconciliation. Ito po napaka-importante. If we are a leader in the church, we are youth leaders part po tayo sa ministry ng reconciliation. Wala po tayo dito para maging cause ng away sa the whole church, sa whole um, organization, or even sa uh, brothers and sisters in Christ po. Hindi. Dapat tayo yung isa sa mga strong in leading the young people to reconcile. Hindi po ihatiin. I-reconcile. Coming back to God. No, kung kailangan maging humble enough, ang pride wala in para ma-reconcile yung mga young people, even church members, or even the unbelievers starting coming to Christ, then let's do it. Again, let's go back. The Christian journey is nothing but all about forgiveness. I hope natatakpo natin yan sa ating mga isipan. World's view. Ito po yung view ng, ano, ng kalibutan. No? It's okay to write people off your life. Okay lang. Uy, wala na siya sa, wala na siya sa friends list na ako. Okay lang. Okay lang po. Hindi liin ma okay. Mapatay ko. Bala me. Some people are like that. Maybe. Eh. Um, sa ating buhay, naging ganyan din tayo na. Okay lang. Wala siya mabuhi. Mayapon ko. Wala siya. It's actually very dangerous if we have that kind of mindset. Bakit? Kasi it counters God's view. Ibig sabihin, hindi po ito ang view ng Panginoon na gusto niyang gawin natin. Right? We're not saying na dapat po ba ato ipinipis ko lahat ng mga tao. We're not saying like that. Ang sasabi po ng Panginoon is tama po yung relasyon natin sa ibang tao. Hindi po natin ipiplease ang tao. Ang Panginoon pong ipiplease natin. And the one thing na nakaka-please sa Panginoon is kung marunong po tayong magpatawad. Learn to forgive. Okay? So we have it here in our 2 Corinthians 5, to 20. Let me read to you. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making His appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Oh, grabe, grabe si Saint Paul, Apostle Paul po, yung nagsumulat nito. Napakaklaro. I, I hope you have an Iligay non Bible there. And after this, you could read it using your Ilonggo or your Iligay non Bible. Ito po, napakagandang verses ito. Napakaklear. Explaining to us explicitly kailangan po natin itong pag-reconcile sa ating Panginoon. Ibig sabihin, kung feeling po natin na lalayo po tayo sa Panginoon, it might be because we do not know how to forgive. Napakahirap po na sinasabi, pinuprofess natin, yes, I'm a child of God, I'm a Christian. Anak po ako ng Panginoon, I go to church, I even share, I even witness, I even disciple, pero hindi po tayo nakaka-forgive. Napaka-useless po. How could you even say that you love God and God loves you If you do not follow Him. So sabi dito, I implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. And one of the ways of reconciliation is 
Do we learn how to forgive other people? Are we loving like we've never been hurt? If your answer is yes, congratulations, my brother and sisters in Christ. Anak ka nga talaga ng Panginoon. Amen? Amen. So, let's now proceed to this. God is making His appeal through us. Ito po. Ang Panginoon po, mismo ang gumawa ng paraan. Grabe. Grabe, no? Kita na tong kalaban. Pakasala man ta. Pero kita pa tong libuhatan ng pamaagi para mabalik sa iyaha. Where can you find a love like that? It's in God alone. Hindi pinakita sa ibang tao o sa tao lang. It's in really in God. Amen. Now let's proceed. Merong danger. The power of the tongue. Ito. Kasi minsan, you know, kung hindi po tayo nakakapagpatawad, um, iba-iba po yung mga lumalabas sa ating mga bibig. Gentle words are a tree of life. A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Proverbs 15.4 Nare-realize mo yan, no? If hindi po tayo marunong magpatawa, there's so many bad things or foul word, words na, uh, that come out from our mouth. No? For example, if you don't forgive, you keep on spreading these um, bad things toward the people. No? Ay, amo mong gina siya, ay. Pala utang, gina siya, amun ginang batasan niya, amun na ako, gina siya napatawad, di wala, gina siya kabahit sa akong sa ilang utang. And then we keep on spreading this. Remember po, gentle words are a tree of life. Ibig sabihin, binungahon ka. Ikaw tong puno nga nagatubo, produktibo ka. Blessing ka. no Fruitful ka. Useful ikaw. Pero kung deceitful kayo ng dila naton, no? mga labay-labay yung gagawa sa ato niya bibig, mga dili mao nga pulong, makaguba sa relasyon, it really crushes our spirit. And that's the time we can really say, ito ka palayo ko sa Panginoon, ha? ito ka layo na kay Jesus, ito ka ako gana sa kinabuhi ko, gusto ko na magmukmuk, isa ito sa bug ko, ito lala ko, ito wala ako gana mag-smile, magtanaw sa mga tao, gusto ko lang diri sa balay, ay, wala ako gana ah. That's a danger. That's really the danger. I hope if we are in that situation or if we know someone who are in that situation, I hope we are gentle enough to remind them. Is there a person in your heart right now na hindi mo pa napatawad? Patawarin mo na. Amen? Patawarin mo na. That's our advice to them. Romans 13.1 Let every person be subject, be, sub, be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed and those who resist will incur judgment. Okay, so, meaning to say po, um, kailangan po natin isipin always hindi po tayo ang pinakamataas. Ibig sabihin, um, ourself, we, sometimes we're so entitled. Grabe, no? Na feeling natin, no? Tama, ito na akong prinsipyo sa kinabuhi. Uh, it's really God alone. If God confirms that to you, kung ano sasabi ng Panginoon, yun po talaga yung sundin natin. Alam niyo po, you can never go wrong if you compare yourself to Scripture. Huwag niyo i-compare yung self niyo sa ibang tao. Doon kayo sa Scripture. Kasi yun yung napatunayan na God's holy word, the scripture alone. Let me read this one. God who is in control can allow people, may they be of bad refute or not, to govern our country in consideration of the overall view of God's plan for the whole mankind. Minsan sa atin, we were, we're kind of dissatisfied na, Lord, nga mo tanong presidente, na mo lang, nga mo ng leader, na mo naman, nga mo ng government, na mo kakurap ba, hindi ko ganahan magsunod, Lord, o yun, sa ba, ano man ni Lord man, We need God always to be reminded na para ma-remind tayo na siya rin ang nag-appoint niyan. Kontrolado niya yung lahat ng Panginoon. Kaya hindi pwede na walang Panginoon sa kala desisyon natin. Right now, we have been bombarded by this magbabaksin ba ko o hindi? Lord, ano ba? Ano, magsunod na lang ko kung sa himuha to nila. You know what? If magbabaksin ka or dili, the best answer to that is what does God tell you? That's how important it is na may personal relationship tayo sa Panginoon. Ano yung nire-reveal ng Panginoon sa'yo? Magpavaccine ka ba or hindi? How would I know, ate? God is not even talking. Sometimes, sabihin natin yan, ano ko man, ano gasturyang ginuusakon? ba? Diba? That's why we really need to come close to God. Sabi niya po yan sa James. And God will also come close to you. 
Ibig sabihin, sa everyday ni mo nga pagstorya sa Ginoo, pagbasa sa iyang pulong, pagsik sa iyang presensya, time will come. It will really be revealed to you. It might be with a person na magre-reveal sa iyo kung ano ang decision mo sa life mo. Be patient. Trust the process of the Lord. How often should we forgive? Kailan ka pila din mag-forgive? Gada mo? Ka, isa lang ba? Kalima? Okay, we have it here in, um, I believe it's in Matthew 18, 21-22. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times. Wow, no? Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. So, 70 times seven, hala. O, oh, pila man daw be. Sige no, mag-8 mag times na ako. No? 70 times 7. Okay. Dili kayo ito bright sa math. So, 70 times 7. 490? No, 490. Walo ka pila na ako. Wala ba si Lapaw na ako? 490 na kapatawad, Lord. Or wala ba ako about 490? 485 pa lang ko. It's not actually a matter of counting it and really be exact 490. But this simply implies to us na countless. Ibig sabihin, hindi pwede na i-count natin na ako 10 ng Diyod ko mag-forgive. Ha? No, it's not like that. This is just uh, implying to everyone na wala pong limit yung pag-forgive natin. Ibig sabihin, many times, kung kailangan mag-forgive, forgive mo. Mga matay, nagyapong tatanan. Hindi ba tayo forgive We do not even know if we're alive tomorrow. So if God is telling you tonight to forgive that person, forgive him or her now tonight. Call upon to the call upon the name of the Lord and pray for that person. Forgiveness number one. Paano po kailangan po? You've got to be open to it. Open ka, accept mo. Kailangan mo nang mag-forgive. Forgiveness is not about keeping score. It's about losing count. See? So, countless times. Eh. Pwede nga mag-irisipay ka mo dira, magtumbuyanay ka mo dira. Ako ganit dati. Ako ganit dati. Uy, ako man ganit dati, di ba? Nabatawal mo kuuna sa imo. No, it's not about keeping score. It's about losing count. First Corinthians 13 says, Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Hindi ka mag-isipay, No? Dito mag-ihapay aning mga nabuhat na to. Number two, start tapping instead of hating. Huwag na huwag po tayo mag-hate. Sa tawahanan na ito niya kayo naugali, na pwede mag-hate lang for a moment. Kadali, siguro sa imong pag-release mo sa imong kasuko, pero dili ka matulog ang suko. Do not let the sun go down without forgiving someone. When we decide to tap a ketchup bottle, how many times do we have to tap to open it? Di ba minsan, kung mag, ano ka sa ketchup bottle. Wow, ketchup bottle, no? Um, kisa, di ba, may iba na hindi uma-open? Na So, let's try to watch this video. So, meron ako din yung pa-video, no? Sanali lang po. Pa-video tayo. Mm-hmm. So, let's try to watch this one. Okay, are you ready? Eto, let's watch this short video. All right, all right, it's recording now. Today, today we're introducing sun-dried Peruvian organic black olives. There is a problem with opening the jar, and we're going to solve that problem for you today. I have to get a knife in the kitchen. I'll be right there. We use a knife as a hammer and just tap around the edges like this very gently and eventually, interestingly enough, you'll hear a vacuum release of air rushing into the jar. Otherwise, it's next to impossible to get the jar open. So we just tap it on the top like this and eventually on the sides. Nothing so far, so we'll wait until we hear that rush of air going inside the jar, and that's the key, the clue that we have successfully opened the olive jar.
I think we might have gotten it. Yep. Voila. All right. Okay. So maybe some of you might asking, "Oh, tapos de, unsa man nate?" <laughs> right. So actually, this is that's my that's the same reaction that I had no first screen yan nakita. So let's try to um take a look at what can we take away from that. No, ano makukuha natin yan. So from that video, nakita po natin na before na open yung jar, kasi napakahirap yung open. Before you open yung jar, you need to tap it. Tap ba? No? Para igu-iguunin mo itong kuwan. Itong upper na part. Para mga open mo. Actually, in that video, it was, in, it was actually put in the description box that mga 50 times to 60 times gintap itong cover, itong lid, para ma-open na successfully itong jar, the lid of the jar. So, basically, po, it takes the worst things done to you to bring out the best in you. <laughs> so, yung jar, para rin yung forgiveness bottle. Before mo po ma-open, before, before mo fully na, ma, na ma-realize talaga the importance of forgiving, there would a lot of tapping na mangyayari. Right? napakaraming tapping mangyayari. Ibig sabihin, siguro may someone niya tao nga nakahurt na po sa inyo ha? Or ikaw, best in, ano po ka ka ng uh, ginakonsole mo ang sarili mo? Ano man, dumabalos na ko, Lord ba? But look at the chart. Hindi po siya na-open nung hindi siya tinap. Napakahirap siya open kung hindi siya gitap, no? Using that, uh, yung tail ng knife. So, same is true with us. Huwag po tayong mag magdumot, no? Kita magdumot sa isig katao natin. Start tapping instead of hating. Kung ano man nangyari sa iyo ngayon, remember, it takes the worst things done to you to bring out the best in you. Kaya huwag ka tayo mag-hate. Start tapping someone. Start tapping yourself. Okay? Maling dalawa lang pong unforgivable sins na sinabi sa Bible. Number one, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Jesus said it is the unforg unforgivable sin. But there's another one. He said in Matthew 6.15, If you don't forgive those who have done you wrong, your Heavenly Father will not forgive you. Open your Bible now and check that one in Matthew 6.15. Napaka-clear po yung sabi ng Panginoon. Kung hindi ka marunong mag-forgive sa isig ka tao ni mo, nilipod ka patawaron sa atong amay sa langit. Clear, no? So, dalawa lang, unforgivable sin. Blaspheming the Holy Spirit, yung mga spirit of the glass, you calling the spirits, no? yung mga blasphemy, blasphemous works. Hindi po yan napapatawad. At pangalawa, kung hindi ka po marunong magpatawad. Some of us may have family feuds or in short, mga away sa pamilya. But if it open up and just start tapping, miracles could happen. Kung open po tayo sa ating decision to forgive and we start tapping ourselves we start reminding ourselves we start conditioning ourselves na this is really part of the process like someone has hurt you lord teach me how to forgive this person kasi napaka unforgivable ng ginawa niya remember forgivable yan it may seem or it may appear unforgivable na karumal-dumal ang nangyari sa iyo o nagawa ng tao na yan. But God is telling you, you need to forgive him. Release forgiveness now. Matthew 5.20 So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. Before you give to someone, before you offer yourself, or before you actually um, go to the altar, before you give something to the Lord, hindi po pwede, hindi po pwede na hindi ka nakapag-forgive. Right? Napaka-importante po talaga. Kasi if your relationship with uh, with other people is not good, and you claim that your relationship to God is good, then you are just fooling yourself. Kasi sabi ng Panginoon, how could I know you as my child if hindi mo nga 
hindi ka marunong sumunod sa akin. You need to forgive. Sabihin mo yun sa sarili mo, Lord, teach me to forgive that person. Forgiveness is not about keeping score. It's about losing count. Sometimes the worst done to you can bring out the best in you and it's unforgivable not to forgive. Remember po natin yan. So, ito po, before tayo magtapos, you can screenshot this and you discuss it no, sa sarili nyo and even sa mga friends ninyo, kasel group ninyo or sa mga kasama nyo sa discipleship. You ask these questions. How many of you believe that in our families we need a move of God in this area like never before? You can love like you've never been hurt if you let the love of God touch you and set you free today. Okay, so ito pala yung ating mga questions to ponder. Why do you think some of our biggest hurts often come from family or in your life recently? Ano no? Anong mga biggest or grabe natin nga pasakit? Anong bigan sa pamilya nato? Read 1 Corinthians 13.8. Share a time you felt like love failed you. How can still you see God's love at work? And remember the bottle? Is there anything keeping love and forgiveness from pouring out of your life? How is God tapping in you? Ano ka po tinatap ng Panginoon? Ano yung mga reminders ng Panginoon sa iyo ngayon? So these are the questions to ponder. So I hope na um, naintindihan po natin yung ating lesson, yung ating sharing for tonight. And I'm really praying po na God has really spoken to us in His most special and extraordinary way. Sige, let's pray. I can you screenshot this and then just answer these questions to yourself. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight, oh God, has really been a blessing to us, reminding us that napaka-importante po ng mag-forgive, na mag-release ng pagpatawad ng forgiveness. Help us not to live a life na puro hatred, na puro pagdumot ang araw sa amon tagipusun, kaya hindi ni siya manami, oh God. You are not pleased sa tagipusun nga pati dumuton. That's why, thank you for teaching us na kailangan ginamo, oh God, nga maintindihan ng forgiveness is not about keeping score, but it's about losing count. Help us nga dili kami mag-abot sa punto nga uh, ginaisip na mo ang times, oh God, nga naka-forgive me. So as to take advantage to other people. Pero help us, Lord God, madili na mo sundo na mga unod nun na mo ang mga desires ang mong kinabuhi. But lest we will follow the Holy Spirit, the working of your hands, the, the, because you control our lives, oh God. We come to you right now with thanksgiving in our hearts, knowing that you are the God of forgiveness in yourself and that you will not never allow your children not to have this kind of attribute. Kaya ikaw ang mong amahan, yung nakaila sa mo ah. Magsalamat sa pag-remind sa mo, Lord God, na the only way to really be in tune sa among relasyon sa imo ha is when the moment we understood how to release forgiveness. So, Father God, tonight, we release forgiveness sa mga nakasala sa amua or kung kami man nakasala sa uban, tabangi mi nga magpadayon nga maging malipayo ng among tibuok nga pamilya, among buok nga church member, ang tanan nga mga young people, even here right now, mga bisita namun nga naadari tonight, reminding us, oh God, nga it won't cost us uh, any amount of money. It's not expensive to forgive, oh God. Well, uh, that's why teach us nga batunon gid ang batasan nga kabalumang forgive. We love you, Lord. We entrust to you everything. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Thank you sa time. And I hope to see you next time around. Goodbye.